because I would now like to turn my attention to Ambassador Bogdan Petric, who has a very distinguished career in the region, before or during the war and after the war. And uh, uh, he was, he, he wore the hat of an ambassador and diplomat, but also as a politician, being high commissioner for Bosnia and Herzegovina. And can you tell us, you, and by the way, he was also a witness for the persecution in the trial of Slobodan Milosevic, um, mostly of testifying about the negotiations with the Serbian side and the Kosovo Albanian side, uh, leading to Rambuye, and eventually failure of Rambuye led to the war in Bosnia, in uh, Kosovo and the uh, NATO intervention. So my question to you is your reflection to your diplomatic and political efforts in the region. What, how would you evaluate? evaluate them, what were the, the, the successes you can share with us, and of course, what are the points in agenda that you will still want your successors to achieve? Well, uh, I think the, the biggest and really historic achievement was supposed to stop the war in Bosnia and Herzegovina with the Dayton Agreement. Uh, but as Richard Holbrook has written in uh, his uh, account on the negotiations, the title actually said to end a war. So uh, Dayton and uh, the so-called peace negotiations, they ended the war, but they did not produce a blueprint for a peaceful Bosnia-Herzegovina, democratic uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina. It was in a way, um, and uh, peace negotiations under such circumstances, I, I was in the same situation uh, also in, uh, uh, in Rabouye, where the war was basically going on. We knew at the time that uh, in 1995 that as of October, mid-October, there was a ceasefire in Bosnia and Herzegovina. But nevertheless, you were not really sure whether this, whether there is not going to be again fighting uh, being taken up. So under these circumstances, to negotiate is always extremely difficult. Now, in retrospect, we have to say uh, that uh, many mistakes were made uh, in, in Dayton. Yeah? Uh, just the idea uh, to uh, like to square the circle of ethnic elements in the constitution and uh, a democratic one uh, person one vote elements in there is of course something which obviously does not work in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Or another example, uh, which is that you have uh, practically no. Uh, relevant state level institutions that really uh, constitute um, a state. And uh, when I was the high representative in Bosnia and Herzegovina around the turn of, uh, of the century, uh, for me the single most important issue, apart from all the uh, refugee return and uh, human rights issues, also Srebrenica, so by, by the way, today of course is the 22nd uh, anniversary of. Uh, uh, of uh, Srebrenica, and I was at the time uh, then later on in charge of setting up the memorial center and the cemetery, which was one of the most difficult uh, uh, decisions to be taken. Uh, but basically, uh, the, the situation was such that uh, uh, that the, the the war, the conflict, was continued now by other more peaceful means, so to speak. Yeah, that that still goes on still until today. Yeah. And uh, now, more than a quarter of a century later, we do not have economic progress, we do not have uh, political progress, and we still are kind of uh, emerged in, the, in, in, in this ethnic uh, rationale uh, of uh, day to day politics. And as long as uh, this uh, exists, as long as uh, this kind of state capture happens and continues, that politics is basically clientelism. Yeah? Uh, elections are there, but basically about 50% go to the elections. And these are about those 50% who actually expect something or already got something from politics. Yeah? May I, may so I that's, that, 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 this, these are some of the basic issues when it comes to democracy, <laughs> which is now 
under threat because there is this authoritarian temptation, not just here in the Balkans, but of course the big powers from Russia uh, to, to, uh, to Washington and inside the European Union, think of uh, uh, Hungary, for example. May I, may I ask you, um, thank you very much for this uh, insight. Uh, talking about transitional justice, restorative, retributive justice, reconciliation, you said uh, Dayton ended the war in Bosnia, but you also suggested that the end of the war does not necessarily mean a just and workable peace accord. And one of the issues out there in, in academics, analysts, journalists write about that as well, how could we or how could uh, be the uh, process of reconciliation and uh, coming together between not different ethnic groups and societies if Dayton Peace Agreement is not perceived as a workable and just peace accord. How could you build transitional justice post conflict society if something so fundamentally important is carved in marble and cannot be changed? Well, I, I believe that the one thing now in Bosnia-Herzegovina is really underestimated by the international community, by the European Union, and that is the real onslaught uh, by um, President Dodik uh, on the state court and state prosecution, which uh, incidentally I was the one who, who implemented, who sent him in, uh, uh, put it into, uh, into action at the time. Uh, why? Because basically what I see the situation now such that uh, if, if you can control uh, the um, the, the judiciary, you, you can really then um, implement what you want to be implemented. And above all, in a situation where, uh, where uh, corruption is uh, pervasive, that is the real reason behind. I'm not so convinced that nationalism, ethnic nationalism, as such is the problem. Because this is actually uh, just put forward. Yeah? Uh, but what is behind it are very clear economic interests. And the economic interests, and you know who, who are the rich people in those countries? Politicians. Often are politicians. Yeah? So that's, that's something that people need to realize mm -hmm. that only by being, and now I, I'm not talking about you because you have been out, out of politics already for a long time, but, but those who are, those uh, politicians who are now in place, be it in the, when we talk about uh, uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina again, be it Republika Srpska, be it the feder federation, the state level, everywhere you know, the longest serving politicians are also the richest politicians there. How come? And this is a question that one needs to ask in order to really uh, overcome this kind of uh, uh, myth that uh, the ethnic card is really the real one. The ethnic card is really cover, the cover up for something which goes much more into the material and financial side. And this is also the reason why actually those politicians have no interest in joining the European Union, by the way. And here, of course, the drama is that the European Union right now, because of its uh, internal difficulties, cannot accept new members. And they say, well, of course, uh, uh, the Saloniki agreement, we will, we will, of course, eventually we will be able to join. And we pretend as Europeans, we want you. And on the other hand, there are politicians in the region who pretend they want into the European Union. Yeah? So this is why it cannot work. And as long as these political elites are in power, I'm afraid it's not going to work. Therefore, a critical media, education, these are the uh, single most important longer term issues that one needs to have a look at and really support.